Hey guys, Nado from Ghost of Gamers at the final day of IM World Championship, sitting here with Dennis Gellin or Take, as we all know him. So Take, how have you been feeling this week? How are you enjoying IM? Have you seen any games? Like, how has the past week been for you? It has been great. Um, we have our own booth and Hall 18 with Acer, but I'm visiting the IEM Hall whenever I have the chance to, because there are great games here, with, uh, especially StarCraft 2, because I'm a big StarCraft 2 fan. And I've seen quite some games, sometimes on stream when I was in my hall, sometimes watching it live just a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of lag of time, but uh, I've seen cool games. It's sad that all the Europeans or foreigners are out. Very sad, I, I had all my hopes in Rat, who was the last man standing, but he got crashed. Uh, very sad for him and for us too. Um, I, I have the feeling that Sibit is not that crowded uh, besides today, because yeah, there were like no traffic jam as usual. Usually we have traffic jam here. Uh, and I've been 10 years at Sibit or so, and it, I was always late at the event because I started too late. But this time was pretty easy. I have the feeling there are not that many visitors anymore, but last day is no, fucking crazy. It's so packed. No, like, I have the feeling everyone decided to go Saturday, crazy guys, <laughs> because now it's so crowded there's no chance to walk. Uh, okay, so um, apparently it's very crowded because we have League of Legends actually next to StarCraft 2. Um, you said you're a big StarCraft 2 fan. I'm a big StarCraft 2 fan. My camera guy isn't, but we don't care about him. So. What the hell? <laughs> That is a lot. Okay, not a it's, not yeah, it's not true. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to make him look bad, but uh, I failed. So, obviously, League of Legends much more popular than StarCraft 2. Yeah. Uh, we've seen a huge audience, probably five, six times larger. Does it make you feel kind of eh? Uh, because you're a, a StarCraft 2 fan, as you said. Are you kind of jelly, angry uh, at the, um, the popularity of StarCraft 2 here at CBIT? No, I'm not jealous. Uh, I'm also not angry. Uh, StarCraft 2 is still very big, League of Legends is way bigger, uh, they do a good job with Riot behind it, but I think with Heart of the Swarm we have a good chance to, to improve, to uh, get even more, because it's not bad, it's, it's good already, uh, it, it's, it has been always good with StarCraft, but it can be better and um, yeah, I hope it, with Heart of the Swarm Blizzard will do a lot of stuff. I have, a, I have a good feeling that this game will be nice, very nice. A good, the beta was a good start and was just still balancing and so on. Uh, and yeah, if we all do w good work together, like like guys like you, like me, and your camera guy and everyone uh, behind esports, I think we can make some good stuff out of that. We talked to Kilaris after um, at the first day we were here about actually Heart of the Swarm and the and people's expectation, the hype that's been building. He actually said that something that surprised me personally that uh, he told me that Heart of the Swarm will can't get as bigger than Wings of Liberty ever was. Like people are expecting the huge in surge of people with Heart of the Swarm, but Kilaris was like. No, it's actually won't get that much bigger. Where do you stand on this particular question? It's tough. Uh, on the one side, we have Heart of the Swarm, which looks like a good game. But if you want to play it, and if I'm not totally wrong, you need Wings of Liberty. Yeah. Uh, that means to get new people attracted to Heart of the Swarm, people have to buy Wings of Liberty, which means not double amount, but even if there is a reducement of 50% right now on Wings of Liberty, buy it. Uh, it's still, it's still that you have to buy two games, which costs a lot of money. Not everyone is is uh, capable or like willing to pay 60, 70 euro to play Heart of the Swarm. Uh, I can understand that. It's not few money. It, it's expensive. Exactly. It's, it's quite some money, uh, even if it's worth it because it's a great game and and they don't make money out of the game itself. Just about like selling it. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I think my opinion is that it will be tough, but in the, like, in the beginning of Wings of Liberty it was not that big, it, it was growing from time to time and it, it took step by step and there was a point like we had some crazy MLG, even one of the home street cups had like almost like around 70k peak where it was like very uh, like wondering and it, it, it's, a, it's, a bit, it's worse than the, uh, back then. But I think it can be at least the same, and probably even better, and I hope so, and I think there are okay chances. But the Blizzard have, have, they have to do a good job. Um, 
building more about uh, on this topic, uh, there's been discussions um, in 2012 for a short while. It didn't go too big, but um, people have been suggesting that StarCraft 2 should be made free to play, for, uh, either for multiplayer or just for the campaign, uh, just to have just a free to play uh, component like League of Legends, for example. Um, where do you stand on this? Because there's been a lot of opposition towards like now it will get uh, people like too many noobs, etc. It will um, uh, juvenile the scene, etc. Um, where do you stand on this? I would love to see StarCraft 2 for free, but it totally makes no sense at all because Blizzard invests tons of money into this product. It's a very nice game with a lot of balancing and uh, it's just a great game, but if you can't make money out of that like League of Legends does with skins and everything, it's not possible. If there is a chance, which makes sense, like it's not like, hey, if you if you buy a marine or upgrade, your marine have 55 HP instead of 20, which was it would be crazy. But I mean, you need something which makes sense. And I'm not sure if there is a good way to 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 do that and earn money out of that. If there is, I would love to see that. But at the moment, I don't feel like there is a way you can sell this game for free. It's, I don't know. Hopefully, I'm wrong, but I don't see it. Uh, so your name is closely associated with Com Story Cup, of course. Uh, it's been it's grown into one of the most unique tournaments uh, in the StarCraft 2 scene. One of the what the one I actually enjoy the most. Thank you. Because yeah, uh, it, it, the atmosphere is great. Nobody can deny it. So from the start to the sixth edition, the last one, we've seen pretty much everything. We've seen dancing girls. We've seen uh, white truck cooking. We've seen players casting. What do you have in store for 2013 uh, as, as far as Home Story is concerned? Um, about new stuff, we are not sure right now, but we will have some new stuff. That's for sure, we always have. Uh, but it's tough, you know, from Home Story Cup to Home Story Cup, you need new ideas. Yep. If there's someone out in the community who got good ideas, I'm always open minded for that stuff. Please send. Shoot him something. Yeah, it's like go anywhere, send comments, uh, feedback. I would love to do some new stuff. If you have crazy stuff where you think, what the hell, if he would do that, everyone would go crazy and think, oh my god, Home Story Cup did it again. Uh, yeah, I, I'm free for that. I hope I find some good ideas myself, but uh, yeah, it's, it's not that easy. Yeah, you mentioned it's not easy. I was actually going to ask you the difficulties in organizing uh, the next home story. Is there anything besides finding new ideas, or are there other problems that constantly come up when you when you have to launch a new uh, new event, new season? Do, do you talk about stuff like uh, like sponsors and so on, or yeah, every every kind of problem? What's what what do you have to deal with before you launch a new home story? Okay. Uh, for sure, you need to talk to the sponsors, you need to finance the, the, the product itself, the Home Story Cup, because it has been growing the last years and uh, it's, it's, even if it's a more or less a low budget product, it's very expensive, uh, at least for me. And uh, You need to find sponsors who are willing to pay the costs and besides that it's always getting uh, tougher and tougher with, with Blizzard. You need to find dates where you can have a big tournament uh, being held because uh, there are so many big tournaments and they all want to have the right to, to be there and uh, to be promoted and there should be no tournaments on the same time, stuff like that. So you need to find a good date and everyone wants to have the best dates. Uh, uh, and I'm just one out of a lot of big tournaments and there are way bigger tournaments than my home story cup or like, like an MLG, IEM. Uh, Luckily, no IPL for the moment. Uh, I wouldn't say luckily. But <laughs> nah, like just for myself, for my tournament. But I mean, it's very sad to be honest. But like for my tournament, it's good because there's like one day less or two or more. But yeah, it's very sad to be honest uh, because every single tournament, which is nice, like IPL was and this, uh, has, should be should be around for the community. Uh, yeah, this is a problem too. Um, find good people working for you. It's very very hard and. Uh, you need like 20 people working at Home Story Cup and yeah, it, it's still a low budget project. So to invest a lot of money in every single guy working for you is not possible. It's, it's not possible. You need some volunteers. Uh, you can't pay everyone because otherwise you can't do this event. It's impossible, which is a bit sad because 
so many people do a good job and they get not paid or just like getting like some money or like some hardware stuff like which is which is a nice gift but if you want to do it on a long term you need people who you can count on and if they're studying and stuff like that they can't promise to help you always ah that's that's a tough thing so it doesn't look that easy it looks probably easy from the outside but inside it's it's different um, beside that mm, for sure you need always to get the best players it's it's you can't believe me it's so much work to get 32 players uh, in advance like way in advance like a month ago before uh, signing up it's impossible like I talk and keep talking to all the players so so often and tell them even here like hey you coming you coming and they say yeah yeah let's see uh, then some of them for sure like very interested like yeah I will go crazy go go Apollo promised me he will go not as a player uh, uh, but yeah, he was very happy finally to come to one of the home story cups because I, I have been inviting him uh, two, three home story cups ago and he didn't have time. But now he promised to go and this is very nice because he's one of the cool characters in eSport. And yeah, this has always uh, been a problem. Last time uh, Ben couldn't go, Mr. Bitter. And he's a part of home story cup and uh, yeah, but he needs also some free time as the players need too. Uh, yeah, that this, this stuff, this stuff is giving me some problems but we, it's not the first time so yeah you earned some experience and you know how to handle a lot of stuff overall has it been getting harder or easier to launch the next home story so so uh, there are more tournaments and Blizzard takes more care of having a good schedule which I like uh, but yeah it can also uh, interrupt you uh, also g gives you some trouble but can also help you a lot Beside that, yeah, because of our experience and we have the chance from home street cup to home street cup to buy some more equipment, uh, yeah, it's easier because we don't have to, to borrow or uh, rent stuff. So at some point we will have everything we need and just a setup and we can just go. Our show we use, usually do in a normal business, uh, like every day with a German online show. It has almost the same equipment we need for home story cup that means we doesn't have to build up everything which uh, which gives me a lot more time you mentioned oversaturation of the sack of the just a while ago do you see this as a, a problem in 2013 to uh, that will persist through in the entire year because I've been talking to guys like colleagues and they say like oversaturation is actually one of the problems that um, that stagnated the scene at and lower the overall stream counts because we've known this to be a problem and there's no denying like Starcraft 2 has been losing popularity somewhat not in big chunks but still like a steady decline do you see this um, as a problem for 2013 and how can it be solved? It might be a problem I'm not too sure about that there shouldn't be too much stuff on the same time but there's only one 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 guy, one company who can solve it, and it's Blizzard itself. Uh, and I think they will do a lot of stuff. Uh, they know about it. They already did some stuff in the past, but I'm sure they will do a lot more in the future. Uh, we have to wait for that, I guess. Uh, on top of the oversaturation, there's also the problem of Korean domination. Obviously, yeah, there's no fighting this uh, in any direct way, but. Um, I will point towards companies like Riot Games and League of Legends, they've done a segregation of the scene essentially. They have different circuits, like NA teams will play in NA for a long time, so will Europe, so will Korea. So um, every player, every team gets to gets a chance for exposure within his own region and there's no like going to a tournament, getting smashed by Asians, getting flagged back, you're bad, you should just quit because we know like how the community operates. Um, do you think that uh, StarCraft 2 needs a segregation like this? Have uh, Europeans stay in Europe for s uh, some season of some length? Same for North Americans, same for Koreans, Chinese, etc. Hmm. I, I'm not sh exactly sure what the problem is. I think the Koreans are just crazy as hell. Oh, this. They absolutely have. And there are only so few people who can compete with them outside of Korea. Uh, we have seen a lot of Europeans and Americans traveling to Korea and practice. Some it helped a bit, but there was, I think, no one who like came back as a hero 
I mean, General was there. He did a great job in the beginning. But that that was, I think so at least. He was always been a great player, but he had very good strategies in the beginning. But when they found out how to handle it, uh, he couldn't he couldn't stand against the Koreans. Same with Naniwa, I think. Yeah. And then anyway, it was, was for sure while well, they reached to top eights. Yeah, uh, but I think Nenewa is a better player than General was. I mean, even if General was a great player, don't get me wrong. But I think in general, Nenewa got some more, uh, um, how do you say, like like the like the potential in general. Um, as Stefano has, like he has a chance to beat the Koreans. Uh, <laughs> it feels like Koreans got some crazy bloods giving them skill to beat everyone there's no chance to beat them even if you play the same amount i mean look at huck from what i've heard when he went went to korea he played at least as much as the koreans at least it's like 12 hours a day at least and he was good but in the end the koreans were better you know uh, i mean he still can beat koreans but yeah it's very tough for him and he doesn't do it like in in like every game or something I don't see how to fix that. <laughs> so you don't think if we have like Euro uh, European only tournaments or NA only tournaments that um, this will create, uh, this will help? Ah, okay. uh, 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 yeah. Can it even be done? Because uh, uh, like uh, it's, a good uh, question. it's a good question. Hmm. I think pure European tournaments would be nice for the community in Europe and America. Probably it should be like a European Master Championship, uh, like WCS was a little bit, and then bring all the good players together, and then they play the main final. Uh, That's the idea. Yeah, yeah. The, this idea is what what Blizzard did already. Let's see what they probably plan for 2013 or 14. Uh, but yeah, this makes sense. But it is always being also nice to have like Home Rica. We we don't run a lot of Koreans. Because, uh, yeah, otherwise the Europeans have no chance to win. And Snoot, for example, Im was impressing. He was winning against uh, Symbol 4-0. Uh, but this happens, <laughs> this is raw. This happens just once in, in, in half a year. So uh, I would like to see that more often. So some Koreans in the tournament are always nice. So if you have European tournaments, probably it would be better to have like not that many Koreans. Like it's also with I am. There's only Koreans left once again. All I am. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's a good idea, but it would be also lame to not see Koreans, you know, because I would like to see an MVP playing here in this tournament. But MVP against, let's say, just for example, first Violet against uh, Sting, and and this is not happening. Other, other there are other games, but it, I lose. I lose uh, my, my I'm not that interested in watching only the Koreans. So, yeah, we need probably to find a solution for that. Okay, so, on to another thing you're launching recently. It's the Team Story Cup. You're going from individual to, uh, tournaments to a team league, which is, again, super exciting. Um, can you tell us more about the Team Story Cup? When it will be held? Who will be participating? How awesome it will be? Where? Etc. All the details. <laughs> uh, team Story Cup will start in around two weeks. But the qualifications will be streamed. We got four teams invited, which is Mouse Sports, Team Liquid, Axiom, and Team Asa. Uh, five more teams will be joining the league. Two from America, Korea, which is one qualifier. Two from Europe, and one more from America, Pure America. Uh, a lot of great teams signed up. I will just name a few, which I'm 100% sure they will get a spot for the qualification, which is uh, MVP, FXO Korea, EG, um, Millennium, uh, like a lot more and I'm very happy about that and also around almost 40 casters applied for this team league to cast. Some great names, I will not mention anyone right now but there are some great names included, also local cool local casters from Poland, from uh, Spain, from Russia, uh, all these countries, from, Sp yeah, like, almost like everything in Europe. And there are also uh, quite some American casters and English casters in general. Uh, also one, two names where, where you should be very happy to see them. Um, yeah, uh, this is very nice. There will be offline final, top, top four will qualify for it. 
Uh, we pay uh, travel expenses, not everything, but 1.5k. We pay the hotels. And also, even if you finish fourth, you get 2k. So there's some money to work with for the teams. And it will be at my place. Uh, I'm gonna hopefully make a very good show out of that, out of that because. If you have teams playing against each other, you can also do some casual stuff with teams against yeah. teams. And I hope the teams will be willing to do stuff like that. And I hope so. Yeah, uh, that's it. And I'm looking forward to this Team Story Cup so much. I'm so thankful that Intel and Acer gave us the chance to do that. Because it's a pretty huge project for me. And it costs a lot of money. There's uh, 20k price money in it, the travel expenses, everything, the location and so on. And also the CBIT. So yeah, I'm excited. I think we are. Uh, so uh, the, the story cups, the, the home story, the theme story cup, have been exclusively StarCraft 2. Any plans to venture into other disciplines? As we see, like League of Legends is enormous. Uh, other games growing enormously, like Dota 2, um, of course, very big. Um, the CS:GO also trying to make some steps into esports now. Any plans to? grab some other disciplines or we just gonna stick to StarCraft 2? I keep watching uh, Dota 2. I have an eye on that and I think if everything runs smoothly like it does right now for me and for, for Take TV itself with my whole team, uh, we might see Dota 2 with Take TV. Um, I think we will start German because this is like my direction in general. But I think if whenever I have the chance to do a bigger tournament, it will be English for sure. Uh, I would love to do that. I need the support from the Dota 2 community because I'm not that much into Dota 2. I need a good caster. I need some people working behind it, like uh, admins and so on. Like or people who can organize stuff, knows, know more about Dota 2, the teams and people who, are, who can help you, stuff like that. Uh, this will be quite some work. But I would love to do it, and I, I got the, I got like a studio, everything for that to do cool stuff, cool content, and also uh, cool finals offline. And I think uh, I can show the Dota 2 community that what I do in StarCraft 2 is possible in Dota 2. Uh, and if the people are waiting for that, and if they are interested in having Take TV doing Dota 2, I would love to do it. You just kind of made uh, the majority of our readers very, very happy, I'm sure. So guys, you heard it from Take. Dota 2 may be coming to Home Story, Team Story, whatever. So uh, it's an exciting future to look forward to. Uh, why, not, why not League of Legends? Obviously, this is a natural question I must ask, because uh, there's always been war between the two disciplines. The community have been very on the edge, so... And it, why, why, why one the game? Not one, uh, why the one game and not the other? I think uh, the problem, like lol, is way bigger. Would make sense. Would make more sense money-wise, because bigger numbers means more money from the sponsors and so on. Um, but if you're honest, League of Legends, Riot does everything, and. The players got already no time because they play so much. They have to practice. They live in, Germ in Europe, uh, Germany, um, and it's a, it's a tough market. Uh, and if we're honest, as a StarCraft 2 player, most of them at least, they like Dota 2 a bit more. Like not all of them. A lot of people like both. Uh, but I, I mean, I grew up with uh, with Warcraft, and it, there was Dota. There was no League of Legends, so I'm more connected to that. And it feels a bit more familiar for me with Dota 2. I mean, I also like watching League of Legends, to be honest. But I think also strategy-wise, it makes a bit more sense for me to make Dota 2. I think, uh, yeah, there will be a lot of people who would like to do that. And uh, it's, it's still a young market and, and a very good game. That's what I think, yeah. Okay, so exciting news from Take. Um, and I was Nigel from Glossy Gamers. Uh, thank you, uh, Dennis, for the interview. We'll bring you more stuff uh, as the event goes by. So uh, before we close this up, if you have anything to say to fans, to Dota 2 community, to StarCraft 2 community, just shoot it, to a, shoot it to a camera. Yeah, I hope you keep watching me whenever you have the chance to. I know I'm streaming a lot in German, but whenever I have uh, cool content coming up, just tune in on TakeTV.net. Um, if there is like a uh, 
people are really interested in Dota 2. I would love to to read uh, the feedback because I'm I'm really planning on that. If I see it makes sense, I will do it. Totally, I'm totally sure about that because I already talked to some sponsors here uh, at the CBIT. It's always a good uh, chance to talk to them, and uh, I kept talking with them about Dota 2. And uh, some of them are interested. Uh, I need a good concept. I need feedback of the community. I need a community who is like thinking this makes sense. Watching Take TV with Dota 2, and probably have big tournaments coming up too. Uh, yeah, so please give me feedback if you like it. Uh, just write something and uh, if you have ideas also write something and yeah I would love to do that. I think our readers will pro provide quite a lot of feedback I'm sure about it. So I was rather this was take stay tuned.